Berlin is just a, a, a large or huge city with a lot of crazy people and a lot of stuff to do. It's like a melt pot of culture, creativity and business. Let me know, you know, it's my local park, so yeah. you can do whatever you want. <laughs> okay, great. If you okay. want to make like something huge or something, then just let me know. So, yeah, you know. May, I, I'd like you, you know, maybe to make some shots where I can be a bit close, but uh, maybe we should, maybe you can try one. I can work here, you know, and then I can slide and make the gap here. Yeah, okay, so, so you can go from the front, maybe, and so, yeah, and, you, and I have like in this way, you know, okay, great. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure, great. Can do it. Okay. <laughs> Let me check. My name is Jonas Werner, I'm 26 years old and I'm a photographer and skateboarder in Berlin. Now, the first time when I got in contact with um, serious photography uh, was in the age of 19 maybe. The pastor of my hometown gave me all his uh, analog uh, photography stuff because uh, he also uh, was a photo, well not photographer but he was uh, in uh, interest in photography like years ago and uh, here he has all this or he had all these kind of development things you know like this the chemical that you need and also like papers and and all technical stuff all technical equipment that you need for analog for proper analog photography and he gave me everything like for free he just said yeah, okay you are interested in analog photography use it do it and uh, i started with uh, taking pictures of my environment, you know, like of my hometown, like the countryside, like and yeah. the forest and, and and also like the fields and stuff, you know, not, not nothing special, you know, just to, it was more like just to take pictures and uh, uh, collect some other experience with analog photography. Until, until a special point, photography was like just one thing that I like to do and the other thing was like skateboarding. Two years ago maybe, I, yeah, I, I started uh, to connect both. With photography I always try to make the connection between skateboarding and photography in my portraits, you know. When we, when, we, when we went to a trip or something, I took my analog camera with me and I started to 
making portraits of the skaters around me you know like just simple portraits it's what it was not like okay this guy is doing a trick let's take a picture of it it was like just doing the portrait of my friends for example when a guy was like so, uh, sitting on the bench or something or some somebody was rolling a cigarette i was like just uh asked like oh can i take a portrait of you man Hi, my name is Shiran Alcost and mostly I'm a consultant, psychologist and obviously a skateboarder. I started skateboarding way back in the years. I was like a little child and I got a small penny board, like these plastic ones. It was red and had green wheels and it was all you know, back in the early, early 80s. One day I, uh, I discovered um, a Donald Duck comic. And they did a kind of like an ollie of jumping around and was like, yeah, that would be nice doing this. And the very next day, so I was running around in the city and I ran into a skate shop the first time and I discovered a magazine, Treasure, still existing, and it was quite fun because I have seen people doing things I couldn't believe. So I was really trying hard with my plastic boards though, which didn't work out. So I tried, tried, tried and it's all about doing mistakes and being mastering mistakes. <laughs> Hi there, my name is Tom Padaka and I'm the executive director of the Pro-Am Skateboard Racing Association. So what I'd like to do with you right now is explain the impact forces of the fall. Now, when you take a fall, you want to always turn your head away from the fall. You want to absorb the impact on the meaty parts of your body, being your upper arm, the big muscles in your arm, your thigh, your calf, and then down into your foot. Back in 2000, I guess five or something, uh, a good friend of mine and uh, me were running around in the city and we recognized that there were a lot of places, there was so-called skateboarding places and skate clubs. Um, these places didn't work out for us as skaters. Um, they were really bad made and bad stuff happening there with sand and bricks and all these kind of things, you couldn't skate at all. So we took his car and we drove around the city of Hamburg and we recognized that we had over 50 little skate plazas and just five or six of them were skatable. We just skaters in the city and we want to have some places where we can stick and we don't get busted by the police. When I was there a little kid and going, going to skate somewhere, someone built it up a little ramp. I didn't know how to build that one, but he showed me. So this is the legacy. And um, yeah, I built skate parks now. So I give it on to the next generation, hoping that they are enjoying it and doing better than me. <laughs>
I came from a small village. We, we skated behind the supermarket in the corner and uh, with 15, we were starting like smoking cigarettes, like secret, secretly, you know, like in the corner and uh, had some like beer mix drinks, you know, like, and, and we also started um, to, build, to build our own stuff, you know, like this old wood. There, from this point on, we, 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 call, us, we, we call ourselves skaters, you know. There are different criteria on how you build a skate park. Um, first of all, you really have to recognize what are the needs of the people who skate in the, um, in the near, who are coming from the place, let's say like the tiny town or like a big city or whatever, or the quarter in the city. And um, sometimes you have to think what is needed and sometimes what is there and should be done better. And then you get into this thing, what is the flow? How can you use a small place like four, five, six hundred square meters and build it like there's a flow? And then it becomes artistic because you just start imagining yourself skating on something. And it's not possible at all without fantasy and a lot of ideas on how you flow in a park and you know when you see a, something you start having this fantasy about like, you see a little sidewalk and stuff like that and you're like, sitting there and you don't see the sidewalk you see the trick being a skater it, it means that you're also like thinking as a skater you know you think about things uh, you're watching things like a, a skater you know especially when every time when i come to a to a new city i don't i don't watch like to uh, i don't know like the 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 museums or something i just for example i just go uh, with the bus into the city and then i uh, um, watching the sidewalks and the stairs and, and, and try to find some gaps and things you know like and uh, taking pictures like an idiot from from stupid gaps and sidewalks and sending it to my friends and oh, look at this and this city we have to go there skating man and it's kind of a madness you know My really favorite skateboarder because he well, he impressed me from from day on. He was like the one of the biggest inspirations for me is uh, Jamie Thomas because um, when I starting like skateboarding like serious skateboarding, um, Zero New Blood was my was my first real skate video. Everything you interact influences directly into your skateboarding. When you see people skating on, on the board and you see how they behave and how they interact, uh, what they wear for example, and what they're listening to from, from a certain point of music, you really can tell what they, their field of interest is somehow. You're just listening to certain hard music, for example hardcore back in the 80s. You wanted to go faster, higher and do um, 
tougher stuff. And then we had like smooth hip hop years where, you were, where we became more, you know, let's say technical and hang around with the friends and do more like technical tricks somewhere. You know, when I when I became older, like in the age of 18 or 19, uh, yeah, become also become interesting in things what uh, as, uh, what happens around you. You know, what happens around your hometown, around your city, maybe in the, in the larger cities. You know, so uh, where I went to other cities and uh, I met a, a friend. I met a friend of mine, and he was like from the area of Frankfurt, I guess, like around Frankfurt, and he was way more deeper into skateboarding than me because he had all these or he has all these connections and uh, so it was like the point uh, that I where I noticed or that I noticed that something was missed in my skateboarding then we starting to move to Barcelona five times uh, in a row each year and uh, I guess these kind of trips or what's or especially what happened there this was one of the best memories I ever had in my skateboarding until now because it was not about not just about the skateboarding it was just about the friendship you know to hang around to being a crew you know to film each other to push each other to learn from each other We are not a, a group sport itself, but we are not an individual sport at all. We are always working in a collective. It's all about learning, pushing, respect, and having, yeah, going out with a smile. You know? I'm coming home with a smile, even if I'm humbling and have some scars, but I'm coming home and saying like, yeah, you know what? I did that one, that, that trick felt nice. I really felt that one. If you don't have that feeling, you don't go home.